In this video, I'll be walking you through step-by-step -step how to build this AI agent that you can chat with and ask questions about any kind of PDF or other document type that is uploaded to a vector database. The AI is going to interact with that database and collect the information necessary based on the question you ask. So we'll set up two workflows in this video and there's going to be no code involved. It's all in NAN, which is an AI automation platform with drag and drop elements so you don't have to code. You don't have to know how to code or any of that. First, let's do a quick demo to show you how this works. So in my Google Drive, I have this PDF stored. It's Alphabet announces second quarter 2025 results. So this is just their quarter two earnings report. I uploaded that to the vector database using the workflow. And so we'll ask a question to the agent about this, uh, this earnings report. We'll say, what is Alphabet's income this quarter? And we'll send that off. So the agent's thinking it's using the vector store to grab that information. Alphabet's net income for the quarter ended June 30, 2025, and is 28196 million. And so you can upload any kind of document you want or any PDF you want. It could be about anything, and this agent is going to be able to give you great answers. The tools we'll need for this workflow are NAN. So if you don't already have this hosted on your computer or hosted it in the cloud, I have a video that I'll link here, and you can go host it locally on your computer with Docker. We'll need um, OpenAI. And then we'll need Pinecone, which is where our vector database will be. And we'll need Google Cloud credentials. So I'm going to walk through how to set these up in this video, and we'll start off with Pinecone. So you're just going to go to Pinecone, create an account, and you'll need to create an index. So I already have one created, but I'll just go in here and create one so you guys understand how it works. You'll need to give it a name. You can name it anything. And for the configuration, you want to choose the text embedding three small. All right. As for everything else, you can just leave it as the default serverless, AWS, and whatever region you're closest to. And then you'll click create index. And there you go. I'm not going to create it though. I already have one. When you get your API key, you'll want to store that somewhere secure so that you can copy and paste it later when we need it. If you don't, then you're going to have to go in here and create a new API key later because they won't show you it again after you create it for security reasons. So now we can hop into NAN and create a new workflow for uploading our PDF to the vector database. All right, so we'll call this PDF to vector. And our first step, we'll need to do a trigger. Let me just close this. Here on the side, you'll see a list of triggers that you have available. We'll choose the trigger manually option, but there's a bunch of other triggers you can, you can choose from in here, like on chat message or on schedule. When we click this execute workflow, then the data will start flowing and the workflow will be initiated. It's kind of how it works. For our first node, we need to capture that uh, document we have in the drive. So by the way, just make sure you have an actual document in the drive, like a PDF, um, and search Google, Google Drive. Look for the download file. So this will create a node that's connected to our trigger. and we'll need a credential to connect with so that we can connect our Google account to this NAN workflow. So you'll click create new credential and we see we need a client ID and a client secret. And to get those, you'll want to go to the Google Cloud, right? Create an account and then go to the console and you'll need to create a new project, click into it, and then you'll need to enable the Google Drive API. So go to enabled APIs and services and search Google Drive API. And you'll see it is right here. Click on it. Then there's going to be a button that says enable. You'll click that and then you should see this after that's enabled. Then you'll need to actually create your uh, credential. So go to credentials here and click on OAuth client ID. So you'll go through this form. You'll click web application. I have videos on this, by the way if you need extra uh, in-depth clarity on this. Um, and I'll link them here. But basically, you'll get a client ID and client secret from that. You'll, again, you'll want to copy and paste those uh, that client secret somewhere secure because you won't be able to see it again after it's created. OK, one more thing you'll need to do is set up your consent screen and then go to audience and add a new user, your email that you're going to be using. That'll make it so we can actually access our Google services within NAN. Like I said, copy and paste the client ID and client secret into here. Once that connected successfully, we can move on to the next thing. 
resource should be file, operation should be download. For the file, you'll be able to select it from the list and this will display all of your Google Drive files. So let me just find out the name of this. It's 2025Q2. So I'm gonna search this up in here, 2025Q2. And you can select it from the list. So whatever your file name is, you'll search it there and then select it. Okay, so if we execute the step, we can see that we have gotten our data. This is in a binary format. If we want to actually view it, we can download it and view it on our local computer. But you know, I trust that it's the actual file. So we'll move on to the next step. We'll click the plus here, search vector, pinecone vector store and choose that one. Oh, and then choose add documents to vector store. All right, you'll need a credential to connect with. So like I said earlier, you should have copied and pasted that API key somewhere. So copy it and paste it into here or go ahead into Pinecone and create a new one, copy it, paste it. Okay, then the operation mode is insert document and the Pinecone index, you'll choose the index that you created in the beginning. Embedding batch size, just leave that how it is. Basically tells the uh, node how many documents it should embed in a single batch. And then we'll want to add an option for a namespace. Okay. This will make it so we can have our things organized better and um, we can access our data from these NAN workflows. Okay. So if we go to Pinecone, we can see we already have a couple, uh, a couple namespaces created in this index. So I'm just going to create a new one with a different name. So I'll copy this. You don't have to do this, by the way. You can just type in here, uh, whatever you want to name it. Okay, so I'm going to name it this. And yeah, I think that's good to go. So we can move on to this step. So you want to add a document loader, choose default document loader from the side here. And the type of data should be binary. Like I said, the uh, PDF we download is going to be coming in as binary. And the mode should be load all the input data. The data format is automatically detected. It's going to automatically know it's a PDF format or whatever format your document is. And then text splitting is just simple. So how this works when uploading your document, it's going to be in chunks. It's not going to be all of it at once. And so you want to choose how many characters each chunk should contain. And in this case, we're, we have a PDF, which is pretty large. So we want to do a thousand. OK, and um, this simple one that they give you as an option here splits it into every thousand characters with 200 character overlap. So that's good for our purposes. And then that's good. We'll go to embeddings and we'll search OpenAI. And here you'll want to create another credential for OpenAI. I believe this is the final one we'll need. So click on create new credential and then you'll need an API key. So go to OpenAI and you'll just log in, go to your profile and click on API keys and then create new secret key. Go through the form here and uh, you'll be good. Copy that secret key again, paste it somewhere so you don't lose it. Paste it here and click save. Then for the model, we'll do text embedding three small. We're doing this one because that's the same embedding we used when we created our Pinecone vector store. Uh, if you forget, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I mean this thing right here. Make sure they line up. And then you'll want to add an option for dimensions. Uh, if we go to our index, you can see the dimension is 512. So make sure those line up. You'll input 512 here. If you don't do that, there's going to be an error. I learned the hard way. All right, so now we can execute the workflow and see if our document gets uploaded to the vector database. All right, let's go to Pinecone and refresh. See namespaces. Yep, we can see our new namespace was created with the correct amount of records. Wonderful. So now we can move on to our next step, which is the actual agent. Click on create workflow and you can name this vector agent, right? And for our first step, we need a trigger to execute this workflow. So we're going to make it a chat trigger so we can actually chat with the agent, right? And so you'll want to click plus here and add an AI agent. So our chats go directly to that agent. So click on AI and then click on AI agent. And you can see here the source for the prompt is connected chat trigger node. Good. So our chats will be coming into here. It's going to use that as the input. Then we'll need to create a system message. We'll touch on this later. We'll create a very detailed system message, system message, which is kind of like the instructions for the model to interact with its tools and know what tools to use and know what to send back to you. Okay, 
So for the chat model, we'll just do OpenAI and we'll choose the 4.1 mini model. You'll already have a credential to connect with, so don't worry about that. You already have that. You could choose a beefier model like GPT-40 if you want, but the 4.1 mini is gonna do the trick for me and it's on the cheaper side of the models. Then for the tool, we'll search up um, answer store question or vector store question answer tool. Describe the data in the vector store. Right, so we'll say use this tool to access the, to answer the user's question with data from the earnings report. Okay. Then for the language model, again, we'll do open AI chat model and choose the same model and credential. For the vector store, we need to choose our pinecone vector store. Okay. And the same credential operation mode should be retrieve documents as vector store for chain tool. And then we'll need to choose the, uh, the index we created earlier. Make sure to put the pinecone namespace in. So you copy it from here, or just if you remember it, uh, type it in. Then we have to do one more thing. We have to add an embedding to this vector store. So again, do open AI. And same thing, do the text embedding three small, because again, that's what we use for this index. And add a batch or a dimensions of 512. All right, so this should work now. I believe it should work, so we should test it out after we add our system prompt, I almost forgot. To get the system prompt, I'm just gonna go to ChatGPT and ask it to generate one for me. Take a screenshot of the agent here, head on over to ChatGPT, put this in here and say, if you were creating a more production ready version, you'd probably want to spend more time generating this prompt. A bad prompt can be the difference between having a working workflow and one that breaks, even if you have the right tools hooked up. And if there's any issues, we'll update the, the prompt, but there shouldn't be. One more thing we're going to do is just add a little memory tool here. So click on memory and just do simple memory and have the context window uh, keep that at five, like the default. This will make it so the agent doesn't forget what we were just talking about. It has a, it knows what the five previous messages were. And so it's kind of more like conversational tone. Okay. So let's go ahead and open the chat here and ask another question. Let's see what we should ask. Let's go into the PDF. Um, income. Ask about expenses. What were the top expenses this quarter from Alphabet? thinking it's uh, grabbing that data from the vector store sending it back to the model and here we have a great answer that's awesome so instead of having to go through the document manually and finding all of these numbers the agent does it for us and it gives us a very nice concise answer that is human readable and yeah we can ask any question we want about this document we could upload other documents and ask about those ones it's really, really powerful. So that's what I have for you guys today. I hope you learned something and are able to understand all of these um, nodes here and kind of like the fundamental aspects of what this agent does and how it works. You know, in the future, you could add another tool that this AI agent could use. It could be like a multi-agent workflow where there's multiple agents communicating with each other. So it's really important to understand the basics so that you can build things like that in the future. So if you guys enjoyed this video, then definitely leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to download this workflow for free, I have a free school community. I'll link it in the description. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.